I, on the woodpecker today, as a Christmas gift for Renee, I made this huge stamp. I wonder how she will fit it in her album. Since I've stopped using Renée as my personal slave, she's gone back to working on her stamp collection. The house is full of stamps. So I thought that maybe she'd be glad to have a big wooden stamp just for her. So I peeked inside her Canadian stamp album to find a nice one. I'm not really inspired by all the royalty. But when I spotted this nice beaver, I knew right away and I said to myself, this is it. This is the perfect stamp. A beaver. Another animal that loves wood. After taking its picture, I use Photoshop to trace its outline. When I'm done, this is the result. I print several full-size copies of the stamp. The first one will be the pieces placeholder. The second will be the cut pattern and I also printed the actual stamp to have a real size reference. I begin by using my pattern to measure the amount of maple I'll need. Then I cut it. When I have a smaller piece of wood, I straighten two sides. I want a wide but thin piece of wood for the back of the stamp. So I cut a thinner piece with the table saw. But I'm unable to cut it all. I wish I could finish the job with the bandsaw, but no such luck. I'm forced to finish the cut with this demolition tool. Then I do it all again with the rest of the board. After making sure I have straight edges all around, I glue them together and put that aside while the glue dries. The maple wood will be the light part of the stamp. All the rest will be dark walnut. But just like for the maple, I need to have smaller planks. When I have to, I glue them together. While the glue dries, I cut thin pieces of scrap walnut. After cleaning the belt from the sander, I sand those thin pieces. I'll take all of them to make the layers of the stamp. But the first piece I cut is the maple leaf. It's finally starting to take shape. Next, I cut the letters. Since there are three A's in Canada, I stick three pieces together and cut that letter only once. After a while, I have all the letters. But I need the five cents too. As simple as that. The last lettering is smaller. I want thinner letters, so I rip a piece in two. Ah, uh, the saw left nasty marks on the wood, so I need to sand them before sticking them together to cut two postages. After a little while, I have all the letters for the stamp. But letters are not enough. I still need to cut the actual beaver. To do so, I take my walnut glue up and sand it straight. Since the drum sander is out, I also sand the maple. While I'm at it, I finish all the sanding.
Now, I'll take this piece of wood and transform it into a beaver. First of all, I need to cut the bottom straight. Next, I stick the pattern on it and cut it to the right size. The first thing I do is remove the sky. This part will be the maple backing. A nice beginning, but it's far from done. Here they are. All the pieces are cut. The only thing I still need to do is to cut the maple leaf outline. All done now. But when I look at the original stamp, I notice that the head of the beaver is different from the rest. So I decide to cut its head off. Now I'm happy with all my pieces but I need to simulate the texture of the beaver's fur. So I get several of my carving burrs and try them on a scrap piece of walnut. When I'm done, I even spray a coat of lacquer so I can see the final look. Now I have a better idea of the burr's texture. I remove the paper and start shaping the beaver. For the tail, I use a finer grit. Next, I add details over the carving. Then I shape the head and polish it with a fine grit. With the real stamp, I find and draw the fine details that I must add with carving chisels. When I put everything together, I notice that I don't like the way I carved some part of the body. I fix that. Since the tree lines are way farther than the beaver, they should be thinner. So I go to the bansa and cut their shape in half. It's much better. I just need to shape them now. The trees are done. I need to do the same thing for the water. Then it's time to shape the ground. But when it's time to shape the big bottom chunk, I see a potential problem. There's not enough wood under the tail and this will break. By looking at the original stamp, I notice a line. I untrace it to my piece and cut it. Then it's all the same for all the other pieces. Ah, I'm done. But I don't like that there's no transition from the body to the tail. So I get some carving chisels and carve a little. When I'm done, I just redo the first texture. I 
I also didn't texture the trees, so I add some right now. This is way better. The beaver's texture is too rough. I hand sand it a little. I'm finally ready to work on the back of the stamp. I begin by sticking my pattern onto the back. Next, in the middle of each stamp border holes, I punch a small divot. When I'm done, I stick this onto a scrap piece of plywood before going to the drill press. When all the 92 holes are done, I cut them in half. After removing the paper pattern, I notice that I've damaged the wood in several places. To fix that, I use a drum sander again. When the back is a little bit thinner, I sand it smooth. Then it's time to get ready to sign my masterpiece. When it's done, I make the final sanding. Now I can check what this will look like when it will be done. But when I look at it, I find something I don't like. There's no reflection from the trees onto the water. I fix that right away. Now I'll use those thin pieces of walnut to make the outline of the stamp. The first thing I do is to sandwich a strip between a metal ruler and my workbench. Then with an X-Acto knife, I cut small strips. When I'm done, I just plane them. Now I can glue the first piece in place. I had marked its placement beforehand. Before going any further, I clamp it to the back and wait for the glue to dry. When it's dry, I glue the rest of the pieces. Then I put weight on it and leave this to dry. When the glue is dry enough so I can remove the sandbag, I can begin to glue the letters. I start by the five, followed by the first two letters of Canada. But when I'm ready to glue the sand sign, I can clearly see that it's too thick. It looks weird. So I cut it in two. And glue it. Then I finish the rest of Canada. The two little lines in the sand sign. And I finish with all the letters from Post Postage. On the actual stamps, there are some lines in the center of the maple leaf. I trace them on my maple leaf, then with a carving chisel, I carve the lines. I polish the leaf and glue it in place. Now I can cut the tin border. To do so, I put a transparent piece of plastic under two strips and with a chisel, I cut both of them at the same time. I always use painter's tapes to hold the strips in place while I cut them. After cutting all of them, I can glue them in their place. When the glue is dry, I use a chisel to clean the excess glue. Now I'm ready for the first coat. I begin by blowing away the dust. Then the first coat of lacquer. I start with the back. But the real magic happens 
when I spray the actual walnut. This dries pretty quickly. An hour later, I can spray a second coat. I spray four coats like that. The next day, I'm ready to install the wall hook. And with this last screw, René's Christmas present is finished. When I look at it, <laughs> I can't believe how far I came from my ugly Santa. But this is not for me. This is René on Christmas morning. Oh, wow! Hey, un beau timbre! Un timbre de Saint-Saëns. Oh, ça sent bon, The last thing I need to do is to hang it on the wall of René's stamp room. Here it is, the Christmas gift I gave my lovely wife last year. It's still on the same wall. I guess she still likes it. As for us, we'll see each other in the next episode of The Woodpecker. <laughs>